Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another Out of the Fast Lane podcast. It has been so long since we've done an Out of the Fast Lane podcast. The last podcast we've done was January 28th, earlier on this year. And uh, it's been a while since then. I've been covering a lot of racing around the country. If you guys have been staying tuned on that, you've been seeing all the interviews, I'm sure. But it has been so long, and it's but since the season's starting to wind down, I think it's a good time to bring the podcast back. And today, we have a special guest on the show, um, NASCAR Truck Series, former NASCAR Truck Series driver Justin Fontaine. His cousin is Chris Fontaine. He's Chris Fontaine was one of the best I think, NASCAR Truck Series super speedway racers around. And Justin is here. He's uh. He's went through some uh, speed, super speedway races himself. But before we get going, I was at Albany Saratoga last evening, and um, it was a great race. Ronnie Johnson ended up picking up the win there. Uh, Ronnie also is your co- one of your co-champions at Fonda Speedway. If you got go back and watch that interview, that's on my channel. It was about last week. Him and Rocky Borner tied for the championship down at Fonda Speedway. And both picked up the points championship. So that was very cool to see. First time. It's been a long time since we've had a co-champion down at Fonda Speedway. So that was a nice story to cover. Um, We also got to talk to Brett Dale last week about what his thoughts were on the 2021 season here at at Fonda and all that. And they got to go back and watch that. Um, And then a couple other interviews with like with Kyle Dingman, Jim Mike Soul, and a couple other guys during the meet and greet was also pretty cool to catch up with some drivers during that meet and greet we had last week. I picked up quite a few photos from the meet and greet. Um, Shout out to JB Photography for all those because those things came out very nice. And uh, yeah, so on today's show we have NASCAR Truck Series driver Justin Fontaine. Justin was. A former NASCAR Truck Series driver for Nice Motorsports, before unfortunately having a little bit of a health issue forcing him to leave the racing world. But Justin is joining us here today, and uh, we're gonna say hello to him. Justin, welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you for having me. It's good to be here. So it's been a little while since you've been in a race car. Obviously, you were had you had a couple of health issues that forced you to leave the race car. What's Justin Fontaine been up to since the NASCAR world? Uh, I have been basically returned to the life of just a normal college student. I have I am totally out of the racing racing circle, uh, pretty much except for just going to races as a fan. I've uh, been focused on school. Um, I was uh, I worked as a uh, Deputy campaign manager for a U.S. congressman last year for the 2020 campaign, um, and the next uh, the next project right now is uh, a law school. That's the my my next um, my next path. I, I took the LSAT in June, uh, and I start my applications uh, coming up in on like September 1st ish. Um, I'm starting my applications for that, so that'll be the next three years of my life uh, after I graduate. Um, but yeah, just just kind of going back to the normal college routine, um, you know, doing little little jobs like the campaign stuff and uh, focus on academics. That's that's pretty much been my life uh, for the last uh, uh, three years since I've been racing, something like that. Well, that's good. Uh, do you miss racing at all? I gotta ask. Has it been has it been going through your mind, man? I wish I'd get back in the race car. Uh, it comes and goes. Um, I think honestly, and, and you know, I, I haven't I haven't spoken to a lot of industry people since everything shut down last year. Um, I think COVID has helped me miss it less because it because the, the dynamic changed so much. You, know, you show up at the racetrack, you don't get any practice or qualifying, you just go, and there's no fans. Now I mean, there's fans now, but there weren't last year. Um, that probably helped me just accept that I had moved on. Um, I think any time I watch a truck race, I miss it a little bit because um, that was that was my that was my series. Um, but uh, it's it, it comes and goes. It really it's it, it varies. I think right now I'm I'm at my most uh, at peace. 
piece with it. Um, you know, there's times where I'll see a late model race and it'll look kind of fun to be a part of it. But mm -hmm. for the most part, I've just been focused so much on, on my other things that it's, it's hard because you almost don't have time. Mm -hmm. So obviously going it, so throwing it back to probably when you were maybe like eight or nine, started a quarter midget racing. What was, how did you get into that quarter midget racing? How did you get into racing in general? Well, I'm going I'm to fact check you a little bit here. So I was actually 12 when I 12. started quarter midget racing. And I, I only say that because I think I had an unfair disadvantage because I was like, <laughs> I, raced, I raced with Harrison Burton back then. And uh, mm -hmm. he was... Gosh, he couldn't. I don't know how. I don't know how much older I am than him. Other than I know I'm He's am older. 21, so he just yeah, turned. He just turned 21. Okay, so I'm 23. So I'm you know, two years old than he was. So he would have been like nine or ten back then. And I was like the oldest kid that raced. So mm -hmm. you know, everybody hears the stories now where kids are like four getting into quarter midgets, uh, and I, here I am in fifth or sixth grade running them. Uh, so I, I, I want to throw that out because I, mm -hmm. I think that that. Um, but yeah, so I started, I, I got interested in, in NASCAR when I was probably nine or 10. Um, my dad and I, and my, my brother, we were just sitting in the living room, uh, and, and the Bristol night race just happened to be on. And, uh, I fell in love with it. Um, that was, you know, Jeff Gordon was running the, the blue and red DuPont flame job. And, um, but I, I was just gravitated to that car and, um, at that point, it was just I wanted to be a fan, and then it el escalated to, you know, going to like the little rental go kart tracks and loving that, and then finally like convincing my dad when I was twelve to get a quarter midget, and, and that was even still just kind of a hobby. Um, and we did it uh, whenever there were off weekends during summer break. He, my dad, really he emphasized like the fam, like being having family things. So we, I never missed like a family trip to race. I never. Uh, took time out of school to race. It was very much just we're gonna do this as a hobby, and then you know it'll hopefully you'll you'll find something else. And it just became you know my own like addiction, and, and uh, we ended up snowballing into mm -hmm. what ended up becoming a ten-year uh, career. Mm -hmm. So obviously, what were some of the ra actually? No, we'll, we'll continue on the quarter midget area. What were some of the racetracks you got to race at in the quarter midgets back in the day? I raced that exclusively one track. Uh, never, we never toured, uh, which in hindsight was probably a mistake, but uh, we raced over in uh, Salisbury. And uh, uh, I don't know how many people know this, but Bobby Labonte actually built a quarter midget track over in Salisbury right outside of Charlotte. And it is, when I was there, I don't know, I've not been to it in years, but um, the facility was one of the most professional racing facilities I've ever been to. Um, particularly for like a minor league type of racing, um, just very well taken care of place. So that was that was our, our go to. We talked about racing other places, but again, it went back to you know, we really emphasized not jumping so far into this where it took out other parts of my life because um, I was young and I needed to make sure that I was balancing school and family and, and friends. And, um, it was very much just we're going to go to this track when we can, and it, it made sense because only two hours away. Um, but that, that was the primary primary track for me. Mm -hmm. So obviously a couple of years later, you get the phone call from the late Eric McClure, come race for me in the K&N series. First off, what was that phone call like, and what was processing through your mind when you got that phone call from Eric saying, hey, I want you to come run NASCAR for me? And what was going yeah. through your mind at that day? Yeah, no, that was a really special window of time. Um, so to the backstory to the, that, you know, we raced... Uh, that up in Kingsport, Tennessee, which is right outside of Abingdon, Virginia, which is uh, was Eric's kind of home base. Uh, that's where Henderson Motorsports is, and that's where the old Morgan McClure team was. And that, that building actually still exists. Um, it's a different company in there now. But So we had kind of gotten vaguely connected with Eric through a crew guy of mine uh, when I was running late models, and uh, they knew kind of my desire to move up uh, I was in my third year of late models, and uh, one of our crew guys, he went over, and Eric and Hal were just starting their team. Um, they had started like one, the year before with uh, Fincham, uh, with Chad, mm -hmm. uh, running at Iowa, and um, you know they, they, we just got connected, and they said, 
you know, hey, you know, we, we want to do something with you. And uh, went down to Daytona um, in 2016. That was Eric's last Xfinity race. He ran for JD uh, in the zero car and uh, went to his bus. And, and we just talked. And, and one of the things that stuck out to me about Eric and Hal was just they were one of the few ownership people in NASCAR that felt like real people. Um, you know, they, they, they were very honest, very down to earth. And, um, your dad and I just really liked that dynamic. And so we signed a contract with them like a week or two later uh, for four races. And uh, that kicked off the, the national the national stuff for me. And it was, it was a really special experience to get to do that. Mm-hmm. So uh, basically, how was Eric as an owner? Because I know he's got the racing side of him, but he's also got the owner side. Was it a little... Did he was he able to help you out a lot with a lot of knowledge going into the racing world, getting you started into the first couple of years in in your career? I think the biggest the biggest strength that Eric had that I that really stuck out to me was his business acumen. Um, you know, everybody knows the Reynolds hefty car, mm-hmm. um, and you know, I, I I would assume that not many people know just how hard that guy worked to make that sponsorship package work for, I think he had it for like 10 years. Yeah. Um, so his, his awareness of how to make marketing and sponsorship and business to business all work together was second to none. And he, he taught me a lot of that, you know, the, the, some of the, some of the early knowledge I got about how to present a sponsor that I got from, from Eric and his, his, uh, you know, tutoring basically. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I didn't, he didn't do as much of the driver coaching stuff because I think he kind of left that for the crew and crew chief and, you know, how, how him help me. But, again, that his business acumen was, was really strong. and it, it helped me when I approached companies after I left their team uh, later on, you know, down the line. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, like, thinking, like, Kyle Busch, He's an owner, but he's also a race car driver. That's why I was kind of curious of how, how Eric was, like, as a driver, but also as an owner. So that's pretty good to know. And uh, I know Eric's definitely missed by a many, so uh, we still continue to think about his family, I'm sure. And uh, it's that's pretty awesome that he got your career started pretty much in NASCAR. Certainly. Yeah, I, I, was, uh, I was devastated to, to hear what happened. It was, that, was, mm. that was a tough morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, he, and it's you know, you know, it's easy to see some of the, the people in like the Xfinity series and the NASCAR national stuff that were affected by it. But the people, like I, I went and visited Kingsport um, a couple weeks ago, right before the Fourth uh, of July, and the, the people there, these are short track racers that you know nobody really knows outside of that community. The people that he affected there was incredible as well. I mean, people that knew him. That he invested in, you know, as a friend or as mm-hmm. a race owner or as a, you know, just a racing guy, you know, it was it was powerful, and uh, he was he was a really popular figure up there. And, and again, like you said, he would he is the catalyst to my career mm-hmm. uh, in the national series, and, and uh, that's going to be a part of my life, you know, forever. And, and um, knowing a guy like that is somebody that I'm, I'm very proud to have known. And uh, you know, like you said, I he's got a lot of awesome kids, uh, really young kids, and. Uh, his, his fiance, and you know, we wish them, you know, a lot of healing and a lot of love because they 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 had a really great guy in their life. Mm-hmm. So obviously, the next couple of years, you uh, you started the joint. And you joined the Arca series. You raced for the number thirty-three. Went to Daytona, and well, the shit hit the fan. Going on a couple laps to go, but going into Daytona for your first time, what was going through your mind coming off before coming to Green? With the fans in the stands and this knowing you're racing at the biggest track in the world, um, mostly don't embarrass yourself. <laughs> uh, Daytona. I mean, I actually wrote um, I, I lost my personal statement for Daytona, but it is it is such a place. I mean, mm-hmm. if you haven't been, Daytona is something very very special. And um, even even in the Arca race, you know, the Arca race is the support race. It's not like not the biggest attended or whatever, but even then, it's still just this incredibly special experience. When we went down for the test in January, you know, there was literally nobody there except the teams and the ARCA officials, and that was still, like, so special, mm-hmm. just to turn laps at the track, you 
know, and, and mm-hmm. I, I love all racing, but that place is just so special. Um, and uh, I, I, during that that event, I, I I know I made a couple mistakes before. I, uh, I was blamed for a wreck that I still today claim I, I didn't cause. But uh, um, the uh, that everything leading up to the wreck it was was really really fun. Um, one of my one of my more fond memories, which sounds a little weird uh, about what happened, considering what happened, but it was it was special for sure. Mm-hmm. I've actually, I was fortunate enough myself to get to turn some laps at Daytona as well. I didn't turn the laps, but I did the Richard Petty experience with Stuart Friesen, because Stuart Friesen's, he's local to my area. He lives like 20 minutes up the road, and he races at my local track every Saturday when there's not a truck race. So I'm actually going to Daytona next week for that race and all that, but I was actually pretty fortunate. I've been able to turn laps, and I just, I don't, it amazes me for people like you and drivers like you that are okay with doing that, and especially going in the turns, and you're like leaning like this the entire way. I'm like, if you're not going fast enough, it's good enough to tip your car over. And me and him were talking on the radio about that, and he said, "Oh yeah." He goes, "It's not, it's not easy going around this track. It takes a lot of guts and adrenaline, and a lot of stuff to get a driver to want to go around that track." But it's, I'm sure it's definitely awesome coming to green for an experience like that. Oh yeah. Yeah, I was I was probably more excited for the truck race because I wanted to I wanted to like stick it to the track for what happened to this car and actually run well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it, when the first time I did it at the test was it is the mo- it is the sensation that you feel going into the turn at speed for the first time is different than you will feel in any other racing environment. Um, you know, and it's 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 just wild. And I, again, I. It, the only the, the worst part about it is that not everybody gets to do it, and I wish everybody got a chance to do it because it is a really really special experience. Yeah. So obviously now we'll go we'll go into that part now, the the wreck that happened that started had gave you a back injury. So the race was a, a pretty good race. Was a couple big ones. You were fortunate enough to get around all the big ones. You were running about sixth or seventh, and you're coming to the white flag, and I believe it was Bobby Gerhardt and Cody Robaugh that made contact, sent you straight in, and then somehow you ended up on your roof. What do you remember about that wreck? Uh, I remember most of it because I was conscious the whole time. Uh, <laughs> I it was, you know, I remember it being very slow, mm-hmm. like from the moment that they impacted my car to the moment I started turning up to the wall. That felt super slow. And you know, I don't I don't know what your mind does to cause that, but um, and then that that hit. I mean, I don't remember necessarily what I felt, but I just remember it being big. And then um, I don't I think it might have been it might have been Bobby Earhart who hit me on the driver or the passenger side and, and caused the car to turn over. I don't remember who. It, um, mm-hmm. And, and uh, I just remember that part being extra slow because I, I I started four wheels on the ground then I went to the side and then slowly went over to my to my roof and it was I just went ow 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 mm-hmm. <laughs> and started sliding down the, the front straightaway um there was the, the scariest moment of the whole ordeal was um there was a little spit of fire as I was rolling over and uh, in that moment I was like well if this is kind of how the whole thing wraps up I've, I've had a pretty good, you know, life experience. I, I raced in Daytona. I had a great career. I got this is this has been fun. Uh, fortunately, the fire uh, extinguished uh, on its own, which was a relief. Um, and to spend the next five minutes uh, on my roof and upside down. And um, the the one thing they tell you when you go upside down is don't unharness your seatbelt yeah. because you're you're yeah. actually. Yeah. Well, heavens, yeah. You're fall. If you have a harness, you're gonna fall on your head, and it's gonna hurt. Yeah, and even in that <laughs> scenario, I had a, a, a compression fracture in my back, so it would have been it would have been a million times worse if I had done that. So I just had to sit there and wait. And um, uh, the the emergency crew was there really really quick, which was which was cool. Um, and they the thing that the thing that kind of made me chuckle is the TV coverage actually cuts out. Before mm-hmm. I get out of the car, yeah. So, if, for for people that were watching at home, like which my extended family and my friends were watching, they had no idea. Like if I was like alive, 
Yeah. And, uh, I was watching that race, and I was like, uh-oh, this might not be good. They're cutting out on them. Yeah, and I think the only reason they did that was because they were up on the time the time slot or whatever. But So they so they cut me out of the car. They don't show that, which I thought was kind of – that was unfortunate because it was a, I think it probably would look cool on TV cutting the roof off. Um, so they cut the roof off, and uh, they slid a, like a headboard um, – out of behind me in between my seat and, and they strapped me to it and lifted me out and um, I'll never forget it I, I was getting carried out and I kind of was confused as to what was going on but I remember looking in the grandstand and seeing my oldest brother and one of our buddies and just giving them a thumbs up as I was getting carried into the, <laughs> into the ambulance and uh, then the next thing I, I remember I was sitting in a hospital with a couple nurses and, and uh, you know, cracking jokes uh, a, little, a little bit, but it was, it was quite an experience for sure. Literally cracking. <laughs> um, so obviously sitting, sitting upside down, what is your, like when your spotter is talking to you, what's like, are you guys laughing? Are you guys like, okay, just be calm. Are you guys like panicking? What, what, as a spotter going to a driver and a driver going back to a spotter, how is that like? Do you have to be like very calm or you can, can you joke about it or what? Yeah, so um, my, my team, fortunately, like the crew we had, uh, they, they all stayed really level-headed, fortunately, and they were all kind of better than the people that they had seen friends before. Mm-hmm. The person that I was the most concerned about was my mom, and she was there on the pit box with mm-hmm. my dad. And, um, she already got, like, massive anxiety watching me race anyway. Um, so this was like, okay, the biggest race of his life, and he's upside down. Um, so I got on the radio and somehow the radio still worked. And the, the, the radio connection is amazing. Um, so I got on the radio and I was like, just, if my mom doesn't have a radio on, get her a radio so that I can talk to her and let her know that I'm okay. Um, so I talked to mom a little bit and I don't know how to take stressful situations well. So I was making jokes the whole time. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and I don't, I don't know that my dad particularly appreciated that, but, uh, I was like, I was like, Y'all, I'm upside down. <laughs> uh, and uh, and I, I was in pain because my back, but I was trying not to think about the back. I, 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 at first, I thought I just knocked the breath out of me, and uh, and it was going to kind of subside, and it just didn't, it didn't go away. Um, so I was trying to keep it light and keep it, keep it chill, and, and um, I pretty much carried that attitude up until the doctor told me what I had, what was wrong. Um, you know, I just didn't, I didn't really know how else to act. Uh, like I, I felt like if I was lighter, it would look more fun. Than yeah. Down. <laughs> um, particularly my mom. But yeah, it was, it was, it was uncomfortable. But you know, it, it was it made that race a lot more memorable for sure. Because mm-hmm. I think of like when Kyle Bush flipped the Daytona on the back straightaway. He barely, he didn't go over hard. But I remember him going over the radio and goes, "Yeah, I'm just hanging here. It's pretty fun." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> couple. I remember a couple of drivers were like, like, going back to Talladega Nights. Help me, Oprah Winfrey. I'm on fire, and a whole bunch of stuff like that when he was upside. Because that that movie has a flip in it as well. But that's besides the point. So that wreck was obviously not fun for sure. I mean, you were able to walk. You were some. You were able to walk away, but you were able to walk about a couple months later. The recovery process getting back into a race car how hard was it for you as a driver to get like back to full health and get ready to get right back in uh I mean, it was the it was a three-month ordeal um they told me at the hospital that night that um i had an l1 compression fracture and i couldn't i wasn't allowed to lift anything more than three pounds or twist or Ooh. i could risk paralyzing myself um so you know, I, I figured it was a good idea to follow those instructions. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I basically spent three or four weeks right when we got back just in, in, in bed. Um, you know, my, my parents uh, really, I mean, they stepped up in a big way. Um, and what, what the worst, kind of the more frustrating part about it was I, um, I was in school at the time. And I just started my second semester of freshman year. And I had to get pulled out of school. Mm-hmm. So... I got pulled out of my dorm. Like I had roommates and stuff that I just, just got pulled out from. And 
um, spent spent you know solid three uh, three or four weeks just kind of in bed and very limited mobility. And um, by week two, they had said, uh, you know, you can start doing some things. And uh, at that point, I was like, well, I I, I really do not like just being in, like I don't like being. I felt like I was in prison basically. Mm-hmm. So I called up a, a guy who I trained with uh, at the gym, and I was like, "Can you? Do you know anything about you know, physical rehab? Can you help me?" So he did a bunch of homework, and he was like, "All right, I think we can build a regimen for you um, to just get you mobile." So I spent that the, the remaining time. Uh, I just started going to the gym and uh, lifting very lightweight with my brace on, like just doing limited things to get me going in the last week I was in it um, I finally got to take the brakes off started doing a little more hard, hard workouts and then we went up to motor mile with the team we tested with um, and, um, and they and uh, they coached me and I got me back up to speed and, um, I think I was in back in the car June of that year because there was a big break in the Arca season mm-hmm. there was a big huge break that I, I would miss like three races um, yeah. or something um, and uh, back in the car in June at Elko up in Minnesota um, but it was it was an ordeal uh, but you know, I, I learned a lot about myself um, on my own mental kind of capacity and um, you know, education and things like that but it's, yeah, it was tough mm-hmm. so then obviously coming back from that you raced like you said you raced at Elko in Missouri and they got to finish that season out, but getting to have an entire, almost an entire season under your plate in NASCAR, what was that, did that help you out? And then obviously you moved into the truck series, we'll talk about that in a second, but getting an entire season under your belt, was that able to help you like really learn about NASCAR and everything that goes into it? Oh yeah, I mean, the, in the no disrespect to the weekly series, like the, the, the local tracks, I mean, it, it, it is a totally different environment. Um, going, I mean, you just you don't know. It's like when I was racing in Kingsport, I just prepared to race in Kingsport every day. I, I knew the track, I knew the people, I knew the competitors, and you knew the competitors in Arca. But one weekend you're at you know at, at Madison, and the next weekend you're in Michigan um, or Chicago. And that was the schedule. schedule. Um, and it, I mean, it, it's just you have to you spend that time just learning these tracks and, and learning how to. You know, run at a short track and then run at a mile and a half, or uh, run at a super speedway, um, and that was that was totally new for me. Um, and I fortunately had a really good group of guys around me that taught me properly. I think uh, just how to approach any given weekend. Um, you know, we didn't have a simulator or access to one, um, so I just watched a lot of film um, and all that. But uh, it was. It was, it was a really new experience for me getting to travel and, and, and go to these races that, um, or go to the tracks that I just watched on TV for years. Um, that was really cool. Mm-hmm. Then obviously you moved into Nice Motorsports the following year for your first ever truck series season. And you got to share, the, you got to share Daytona. You got to go back to Daytona, redeem yourself. Although unfortunately you got caught up in somebody else's incident. It happens, but... You had to race with your cousin, Chris Fontaine. What was that like getting to share a track with a family member out on the race line? That was really cool. I mean, I, I don't know, honestly, how often that happens. I don't uh, I don't think, like, Mark and Brian have raced together in a long time. But, like, getting to, getting to share it with him, and, and he's a guy that, like, when I found out that I had a cousin that raced way back in 2008, um, it was like this, like, out-of-body experience. Like, oh, my gosh. I have a family member that does this. Um, so the goal immediately was, I want to race either for him or with him. And uh, he never really lined up because he was in Florida and I raced him here. Um, and then he, when I was in like middle school, he started running, running the Super Speedways. Uh-oh. Might have lost him. Uh, finally, just the stars aligned where I was running in the East there we go. and he was doing his deal. Uh, after race together, we didn't, we didn't race like together at, during that race. Then we moved up a little bit early. Uh, then he got caught up in a wreck. Um, mm-hmm. and, and I will say uh, about that, you know, he's he's got way more plate experience than I do. But I 
decided that I was going to hang back the whole race. And him and my teammate both made the decision to be aggressive before, and they both got wrecked. <laughs> and uh, I, I ended up getting the top ten out of it. So I, 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 you know, not to toot my own horn, but I feel like I, I was the smart guy in that one. Mm-hmm. Obviously, so I've been I read a little bit about Chris Fontaine as well. I didn't know that the truck he ran was like a 1990 chassis, and he was running that because that was his only truck. He only ran the Talladega and Daytona races because that was where he was the best at. And uh, I was I didn't realize that that he was running equipment that was that back in the day before like that was before the truck series really became the truck series. That was back when like. Jeff Bodine and a whole bunch of like the old the guys that used to race back in the day were in that series. Oh yeah, so I think the nickname of it was Freak, um, the chassis, and uh, it was an old Bobby Hamilton truck. And uh, I don't I don't remember how he got it. Um, I remember him getting it, and and uh, that son of a gun was just a great speedway truck. Mm-hmm. It, it 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 could haul. And I remember watching him. I went to his first Talladega race, and he almost won the thing uh, if, if he hadn't run out of gas. And uh, it was just, as, I mean, it, it's a testament to how good the equipment is in NASCAR and how well it holds up. Like that, I, mean, I don't know if you could consider that truck necessarily modern you know, chassis technology, but it, it holds up against modern GMS trucks, modern KBM trucks that are built new. Um, that's that's impressive, and, and he, he, I mean, he's also a guy competing on a, on a shoestring budget, um, you know, a couple volunteer guys were helping him out every every time he went down, mm-hmm. so you're going up against these three and a half million dollar truck teams, and you almost win, it's, it was it was really cool mm-hmm. uh, to see that, and I, I, I always really enjoyed watching him uh, race those races, and then getting to compete with him twice was, was really special. Mm-hmm. So obviously, again, you have to run a year with Al Nice. What was it like getting to run for Nice Motorsports, especially being now that they're one of the top truck series teams in the country right now? Yeah, I, I think there's a, a plus and a downside to that um, because I got to be, I, I, one of the, my more proud achievements is I got to be their first top 10 um, at Daytona and then in Vegas. Um, but when you're, when you're, when the follow-up season is Ross Chastain and he goes and wins like four races or whatever it was it makes you look a little bad uh, but no, I, I um, to be a part of building a team that has become a truck mainstay is is really really cool um, you know, Cody and, and Al and those guys uh, you know I think they, they have a vision of where they want that, that organization to go and um, getting to be a, I mean I, I would consider myself a very small part of, of that story um, if you look at you know, Carson Kosovar making the playoffs and having Truex there and, and even you know, having Ross there for a while and Brett there for a while, um, that's what happens when you get a team that, that develops that quickly is you attract really good talent. And they've attracted some amazing talented drivers and crew guys. Um, so to be a really small part of that is, is really special. Um, I, w- I wouldn't say that I was the best driver they had there. I think the title falls to the guy that won races. <laughs> But I got to I got to be a driver for them. That was that was really cool. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna keep you here all day, so I'm gonna ask you a couple more questions. These are kind of just fun. So thank you for telling me a little bit about your career. That's pretty awesome. Um, if you could race against any driver, past or present, who would it be and why? You may have raced with one of them, but if you could race against anybody, past or present, it could be from any division, any series. Who would it be and why? Uh, James Hunt probably be the guy I would choose. Uh, he's a Formula One driver back in the 70s. Um, I, I like probably most uh, newbies. I, I discovered him when the movie Rush came out and uh, was like, I love that guy. <laughs> that guy's so cool. Uh, and uh, it, he would be, I, I would probably be terrible because I don't think I could drive an F1 car and save my life. But he just seems like a cool guy to hang out with. Um, so I, that would be, that'd be my pick. Mm-hmm. I come from the Northeast, and obviously dirt car racing is very popular up here in the Northeast. Do you have any dirt background, any like kind of dirt background with you? Um, I have been on a dirt track. Uh, I, I am a, I, so I ran the Eldora race or whatever, but honestly, 
it was never on I was never really on my radar. I ran a little dirt. But I think probably among the biggest mistakes that I made in my career it was not running more dirt because the race craft that you learn on dirt I mean you see it with Kyle mm-hmm. this year. Uh, and I think Stewart is another example of the, the, the what you learn running dirt is so unique and it, and, and it's and even though it's so different it prepares you for what goes on on asphalt uh, and that you see it you know you, you see like Kyle Larson run on the high side in these racetracks where nobody else is running the high side he made it work uh, it's it's really cool so I, I think that uh, uh, I should have run more dirt but uh, it's it's fun it's it's a there's it's a really different environment but I would love to have run more Mm-hmm. I always like to ask this question for like new coming race car drivers that watch the show. What advice would you give for a kid, not like me, but for a kid that's trying to get into the racing world, trying to make it somewhere? What What's your best advice for them? This is not going to be the sexiest advice, but I think it is important advice. And that is get good at networking early. Um, networking and racing is probably the single most important thing you can learn how to do because that's going to lead to business cards from team owners and possibly sponsorship. And sponsorship, as you know, is the, mm-hmm. the blood that, that runs through this, yep. this body of racing. And uh, I mean, again, go back, going back to the Eric Fleur example, that guy made it work with, with one of the largest uh, you know, kitchen supply companies in the country with Hefty. Um, I don't know if that would be what you call that company, but um, you know, that, and that came through just networking, making calls. Um, you know, I think that skill is so important, and, and you'll learn it in racing. Ultimately, it'll come naturally as you get into the sport. But just to master that and, and be professional, uh, you know, standing out from people at, at the short track by what you wear, how you talk, how you act in victory lane, or when you, when you wreck during an interview, those things can really go a long way. And just going up to a team owner, going up to a uh, you know, a marketing director and being able to shake their hand and look them in the eye, that can go a long way. So get good at networking would be my, my first uh, and biggest piece of advice. Mm-hmm. Well, Justin, I really do appreciate you coming on the show. Do you have any questions for me? Well, let's see. Who do you think is going to win Michigan? Well, I'm gonna be re- I'm gonna be real. I haven't been paying attention to a lot of the NASCAR season the past couple weeks. I've been a little busy with the dirt racing, but um. I mean, yeah. Kyle Larson has been dominant all year, and he always seems like he's one of the best cars at Michigan, and he's just he's had such a good year. I mean, he just won a big midget race the other night against a couple of the, some of the best, in honor of Brian Clawson. And the guy can win. I think the guy can wheel any race. It's it's obviously been shown the guy can wheel a race car, any kind of car. You could put him in a four cylinder at a little track in Alaska. And he'll go and he'll beat the field and just show him up. And it, I think, personally, I think Kyle Larson, I mean, I like, for Xfinity Series-wise, my family's pretty close with Justin Allgaier. So I'd like to see maybe him. I want to see him get a championship before. Because I've been hearing some stuff that maybe he's thinking about once he gets a championship, getting out of the sport because of his family. So I would like to see him get a championship here and hopefully maybe he can get a win today. I mean, last night... Stewart even had one of the best races of his year. He's, I mean, he's struggled this year in the truck series. Not in the dirt racing area. Dirt racing world, he's been un- unstoppable. But when it comes to the truck series, he struggled this year. And last night, he finished fourth. And that's the best finish I think he's had all year. So those are my three championship picks. And hopefully, maybe picks for Michigan. And that's kind of who I'm going with. I admire the boldness of not picking John Hunter for a championship this year. Yeah, I mean, John, 10 wins this year, that's kind of, that's a little tough. That's going to be tough to beat. I mean, I think it was a big learning curve for John Hunter when he went up to the Cup Series last year and realized, I think he might have realized that he's got a little bit of learning to do before he can go up there and compete with them guys. Because, I mean, besides Daytona and Talladega, his best finish was like 20th. So I think he had a little bit of learning, he had a little learning curve. And now that he's with the Truck Series again, He's definitely showing them guys up, and it's yeah. impressive. I, I, I mean, the kid is—he is extraterrestrial when it comes to the truck series. He's so good, but 
yeah, he's my he's my championship pick. And honestly, he's my default pick for any race that the trucks run now, just because he, he'll, he'll he'll probably find a way. Mm-hmm. Uh, Personally, I was a fan of Raphael Lasar because he came on my show before, and I was a fan of his. And then, unfortunately, his sponsor backed out on him, so he had to leave the truck series. And now he's running the Pinty series and a couple big block races up here in New York. So, I'm still a fan of Raphael. I wish he would have kept with the ride because I think he might have been a force to be reckoned with here in this in this final couple weeks because he's he's really good at Talladega. He's proved that because he's won there. And I, I think he would have been a dark horse going into the... I mean, like Stuart, they're both dark horses trying... Stuart's a dark horse trying to win the championship. Was, and I think Raphael, if he would have had the chance to keep the car and would have been able to keep racing, I think he would have been a dark horse pick here to win that championship. Yeah, for sure. He's, he's talented, no question about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, any other questions? Let's see. Well, all right. Um, here we go. I, I um, mean, every fan, I got every fan loves. Every fan loves him. Where Where does Matthew Benedetto drive next year? Ooh, Matthew Benedetto drive. Well, personally, for like weeks. I mean, personally, I think he honestly deserved the two car. I mean, yeah, Cindric's good, but I think Cindric. I think Cindric. I mean, now with Harrison Burton going to the twenty one next year and Cindric going to the two. It's unknown where Matt DiBenedetto's going to go. I mean, he's got the talent, and it clearly shows. The guy's got talent. He's the most underrated driver, period. And, I mean, I'd like to... Personally, I think if Junior was smart, maybe going back for Junior next year, because I've been reading stuff that Michael and that's not... He's had some health issues that he might be calling it quits on his career. Maybe the one car for Xfinity next year for Matt Benedetto. I mean, he's got Procore behind them. That's a pretty big sponsorship and all that. So if Junior, maybe Junior look into him. I'd like to see Junior look into him. Maybe Stuart Haas as well because I know Riley Herbst. I don't know if Riley Herbst is going to be in the ride next year because he's, he's still got some stuff to learn as well. So I think I could see him going back to the truck series personally. But I'm... I mean, maybe Stuart Haas can bring back that double zero for Xfinity and put the Benedetto on the car. But I've also been reading Haley Deegan possibly going to Stuart Haas. So it's kind of unknown where Matt the Benedetto is going to go. I mean, I would like to see him in the Cup Series. I'd like to see him in a good car. I don't want to see him. I don't want to see him get out of the sport because he lost a ride. Because I know the guy can drive and he's got a win coming. I can feel it. I mean, it might even be Talladega in a couple weeks. The guy's. I think the guy's got a chance, but I want to see him. I just want to see him succeed, and I want to see him go to a ride. Like I know Junior's one of the best car owners out there, and I know they're gonna probably install a fifth car because they just hired Josh Berry this year, and they still have Noah, they have Justin, and they have whoever runs the eight car here and there, which I think it's Sam Mayer. So I'm I'm kind of curious on where Matt Benedetto will go. Hopefully, it's somewhere as good, but. I would just like to see him out on the racetrack because he's a fan favorite and he, he brings money to the sport because a lot of people like Matt and Vendetta. I mean, I I walked through the stands at the Daytona 500 and walked through the pit area even though it was a little weird with the mask and all that, but Matt Vendetta, a lot of people had Matt and Vendetta shirts on. The, the guys just, the D Burrito shirts are pretty popular. A lot of people like calling them that. And I'd like to see him go somewhere pretty uh, good next year. Yeah, no question he's popular. No question. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I mean, again, going back to, like, Haley Deegan, I know she's been – last night she got her first top ten. I mean, that was pretty impressive. First drive, first female driver in the truck series to get a top ten outside of Daytona. So that was – that's impressive to add to her resume. I just – here's my thing, and I don't – not going to call Haley or anything on it, but I just personally don't think she's ready to go to the Xfinity series yet. I mean – She's been in top 20, top 15 every race. She hasn't, like, been up front to prove that she can win a race. I mean, Knoxville, she had fast truck. Fortunately, got wrecked out. But I personally, I think Kaylee Deegan, if she was, I think she should stay in the truck series for one more year. But I've been reading a lot of stuff that Stuart Haas has been very interested in her. And they, and if that's the case, because Stuart likes to have bring the female drivers up like he did with Danica Patrick. So it it could be Haley Deegan next year with Stuart Haas. And I wouldn't be surprised because 
Stewart's got that bond with Monster Energy, and so does she. So that could be one to watch out for next year, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if she was in another gear truck. I, 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 my understanding is it'll be like a small extended schedule next year for her. Um, mm. I, I think she is fantastic for the sport. Yes, she brings she brings money to the sport. She brings the fame. I mean, her dad's. Oh, you you. Uh, her her social media presence. Uh, her I mean, her dad's Brian yeah, Deegan. I think we're we're, we're cutting out. Uh oh. Hold on. Need a little back. It might. Call him right back. Apologize for that. Well, I apologize for the technical difficulties. That is Justin Fontaine, though, and we're gonna try to recall. There we go. Try this again. Although I know there's been a lot of hurricanes as of late and a lot of tropical storms. I don't know if he's getting one currently. But man, he's quite the guy to talk to. It's pretty good stories he had about Eric McClure and all that. So uh, I really enjoyed listening to that and uh, hearing his side. There we go. There we go. Huh? Uh-oh. I lost him again. We're going to get him. Hold on. Hold on, folks. We're going to get him back. Don't worry. Um, yeah, it was a good story he had about Eric McClure there. And uh, I appreciate him coming on. There we go. There we go. All right, so back to what you were saying. I apologize for that. It's probably just some technical issues. I mean, we've gotten a lot of storms as of late. It's a little windy outside my house right now, so that might have something to do with it as well. But back to what you were saying. We'll edit it all out. We'll edit it all out. <laughs> I mean, maybe I'll keep it in there. It makes it a little interesting, but yeah. Um, obviously, I mean, Haley De but back to what we were saying, Haley Deegan, she's got the money. she got the sponsorship behind her. She's got the fame. I mean, she's got the looks. A lot of people think she's really good looking, which I, I personally think that too. I mean, a lot of people do that. Um, and she's just, she's what the sport needs because she's going to bring, she's going to bring some like, popularity to the sport because I know she's got a lot of people that followed her back when she ran stadium super trucks so personally I think it would be a good I mean it'd be good to see her on maybe a couple like maybe like Daytona and a couple maybe like the truck series race a lot of, I would like to see her on the truck series full-time again next year but maybe like the Daytona Xfinity race and maybe like Darlington a couple better get a little Experience on some of the tougher tracks like Bristol, Darlington, tracks like that. Let her get a little bit of experience, and then see what where we go from there. And uh, I think she's I think she's ready for it. I just I'm kind of curious to see where she's gonna go in the future, and uh, it should be interesting. Yeah, we'll see. I like her. I like the way she's approached it. So mm -hmm. what she's got in her dad is uh, everything I've heard about her dad is he's mm -hmm. kept her. On the straight and narrow, so um, I think that's good. And uh, yeah, I mean, we'll see. It'll be. I think that the future is really promising for the sport with the, with the young guys and girls we have coming in. Um, you know, there's just a lot of talent there. Um, you know, talent, talent that has surprised me. I, I mean, I was so pleasantly surprised to see how well Harrison Burton did last year, and I, I am very excited to see what he does in the 21. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of good good young guys and girls coming in so it should be fun mm -hmm. anything else you gotta ask or we think you're good I think we're all set man I think we're good well I appreciate you for coming on the show here today uh, actually you know what any shout outs you want to give to people sponsors people that have helped you in the past it's all yours well certainly I, I, first uh, giving, giving some love to, to niece and Carson I, I, I know they're below the cut line right now I think after yesterday but Still got two races left. Uh, go make it happen. Go go show people what's up. Uh, Superior Essex, they're sponsoring Myatt. I, I think this weekend they're sponsoring Myatt. 
Um, they they were an incredible partner of mine when I raced in truck. Uh, a lot of love to those guys uh, over there. They've done uh, quietly have done a lot of great stuff for the sport um, and their investment in a lot of different drivers. Um, you know, my uh, just just you know, uh, very very proud of the career I got to have, and, and very thankful that people people like you are still interested to to talk about uh, my short uh, short tenure and. To hear my my perspective on things, um, you know, glad to glad to, to be a part of that. Um, yeah, yeah, this it's, this has been a lot of fun. All right, well, thank you for coming on the show, ladies and gentlemen. Justin Fontaine, former NASCAR Truck Series driver. Here's the final question for you: If you got the opportunity, okay. if you got the opportunity to come back into a race car, are you gonna do it? It really depends on the opportunity. Uh, I could I could talk about we could be, you might want to buckle and I could talk about this for a few minutes. I, <laughs> it's fine. I, I, we got time. I have a standard. Here's my standard: I will never do it full time ever again. Um, uh, my family will never pay for it ever again. <laughs> and uh, uh, let's see, what would be the next? I, I wouldn't I wouldn't travel like I did. It would be it would be very much. A, I, I want to have a sponsor that wants to do it with me, if, you know, and it just it would be kind of on my terms. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of my career was kind of predetermined. You know, I was sort of sent to places. Whereas I think if I did it again, I would want to have the final say on how it looked, how we did it. I want to work with a sponsor. You know, it would be it would kind of be my way. That sounds very selfish, but uh, it just took a lot out of me doing it the way we did it the last time. So it would be it would be a very different looking. Um, I'll say this: if if somebody wanted to do a cars tour race, I would love to do something in the cars tour. I think that series is kind of what the K and N series or RPE series used to be. Um, the way they the car counts they have when they have almost thirty cars coming to some of the races. Um, I haven't I don't I haven't watched an art race with thirty cars in quite some time. Mm -hmm. uh, thirty competitive cars with, in quite some time. Um, so I think something like that would be a lot of fun, just a one-off, just go, you know, kind of scratch the itch a little bit. Uh, but you know, it would look a lot different uh, than what I did in the past. But yeah, I, I would certainly consider it if it was offered. All right. Well, I appreciate you for coming on the show. I'm going to keep you here for a second. We'll talk afterwards. For everybody watching at home, thank you all for watching. Uh, this, again, this is Justin Fontaine, former NASCAR Truck Series driver. If you want to learn a little bit more about Justin, there's a lot of websites on him online. He was, I'm sure you can go on there and look. He's also on social media. What's your social media? So you can plug that. Uh, my Twitter is JustinFontaine underscore. And then um, my Facebook, just JustinFontaine. I don't have Instagram, so I'm not going to find much there. Uh, but yeah, follow me on Twitter. I post every every now and again. Um, so yeah, just, uh, if you want to keep abreast of my law school stuff, personal stuff that I'm doing, uh, I try to keep everybody up to date mm -hmm. uh, as I know. Mm -hmm. so there's that's his make sure you go drop a follow there and uh again stay tuned for what i have coming up in the next couple weeks again our second daytona experience video will be coming up in a couple weeks we had one back in february did the whole speed weeks experience but next week i'll be at the xfinity race next this upcoming friday and then saturday i'll be at the cup race and then i'll be at a cruise ship for a week so then it'll be probably after that once i get back from that i'll be able to do that and uh after all of that i'll be able to edit that video and get that out so you get to see the daytona experience i got and uh it should be a fun week there daytona is obviously near and dear to my heart got to see a lot of awesome races there in the past even gotten to see justin race there in the past i was at the race i wasn't at the race he flipped that but i was at the race he uh raced the truck series at and uh it was definitely one of the best tracks to go to and i'm excited to share that experience with you and we'll be doing some more dirt racing for sure. And if you're looking for something to do this Wednesday night, I'll be announcing my final night at Royal Mountain Supercross. It'll be the final week for me. And then I believe Toby LaGrange will be filling in for me Friday and Wednesday. Unfortunately, I'll be done after Wednesday because the season's going to wrap up. But that was that's definitely been a fun, fun season to cover right there for the Supercross. And if you are looking for something to do Wednesday night, I commend you guys to come and stop out. And other than that, please like, comment, subscribe, and uh, share Justin. Share this video of me and Justin. And, uh, it's probably one of my most favorite interviews I've done, i got to say. It was a pleasure to interview Justin here. So um, 
Bye. Yeah, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you all in the next one. Take care.